Gage, Ryan. It's been an awesome night. <laughs> uh, don't forget to look us up on Cottage Prayer Meeting and, and Bethlehem Daily. And remember that uh, Living with the Cause is uh, just, uh, we want to thank them for this evening. It's been great. So, folks, I want to give it over to just a humble man that loves the Lord. He's such a blessing to me. I've really had a great time, Kevin. God bless you. Love you, brother. Let's hear it for Kevin Spencer. When I look around and see all the good things He does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all His blessings he freely gives I owe my life to Him I've got so much to thank Him for Well, I've got so much to thank Him for So much to praise Him for You see, He has been so good to me When I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from. I've got so much to thank him for. Let me hear a good amen. Amen. Sometimes while on this way, I kneel and I stop and say, Lord, thank you. One day, I'll reach heaven sure. Oh, please, let me kneel once more. You know why? I've got so much to thank Him for. Well, I've got so much to thank Him for. So much to praise Him for. You see, He has been so good to me. When I think of what he's done and where, think of this, he's brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for. I want everyone to sing it. Here we go. So much to thank him for. So much to praise him for. You see, he has been so good to me. But it won't just wash away. 
It'll be worth 
earth after all. I want to encourage you tonight, all of us, after all of this
fulfilled by the moment now. Amen. All my life I've heard them preach and I thought, you know, I know, I agree. No. After I'm dead and gone, it's all going to happen. No, it's right now. I was wrong. It's now, in our lifetime. So I'll mention that much, that our nation needs to get our eyes off of people who are in charge because they're not in charge. God can do anything right now. If you don't believe me, ask Hazard, Kentucky. Whitesburg, where my dad is from. I've seen his town on the news several times in the last three weeks. Still flooded waters. I'm going to do two benefits in Hazard and Manchester, Kentucky, to help. And if the Lord shows me to do more, I'll do more. But I'm going to do at least two. And I praise God that we have someone to go to. There was devastation in those hollers. I'm from Ohio. I have to make myself say it that way. But I don't say hollows at home. I just say valleys or mountains, whatever, but hollers. And I'm not too proud to say that. It's what they call them, so I will. But uh, there was devastation, Brother Mike, when they looked out and 30 feet of water coming at them. There were people, Fred, I'll believe, that called on God. And I believe that God heard their, I know he heard them. And if they were sincere, I believe that God touched them. I have an uncle that passed and he was always unsaved as wouldn't I, I admit I still prayed for him but you ever just kind of give up on someone sad to say I would say Andy he's not going to get saved he's just not going to get saved I'm still praying but I, my faith's gone you know I'm just being honest well <laughs> I got in from one of these trips one night and my voicemail was back in the uh, before we got all this new stuff, I forget what you call it. I remember it, was, it had 43 messages is what it would hold. And it was full as usual. That's good. I'm thankful. But uh, everybody went to bed, and the bus drivers and everything, driver and everything. And I was sleepy. I had already slept on the bus, so I worked till about 3 in the morning in my office. I cleared all those messages, wrote them down. And uh, one of them was my aunt. She said, I want you to know your Uncle Bud just got saved. <laughs> so I looked and it was 12.30 and he's in his 80s. I just called him and woke him up. <laughs> Hello, 
I go, Uncle Bud. Who's this? I go, this is Kevin. Well, hold on. Let me get my teeth. You know. <laughs> Here he came. He said, did you hear about me? Or so I said, yeah, your wife left me a voicemail. And I said, you had to get up anyway to answer the phone. We've always heard that one, right? So I used it first time in my life, and I, it didn't go over very good at all. But he was glad I called. But he said, uh, I said, but I couldn't, Uncle Bud, I couldn't wait till in the morning to talk to you. I want to feel that with you right now. And I did. And he said, oh, that was this morning. He said, I've already been baptized. He said, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> they just took him out in the water. I mean, so uh, that's God. And now I want to quickly say that I have another uncle who was a saint of God, Uncle Clay. These are dad's brothers. Dad's brothers all have left now except him. And uh, Clay was born again in the war and when he was 21 years old in the state of Alaska. I've heard him testify several times. And he was a shouter. He would run the aisles in their free will Baptist church. And now we had another uncle named Lloyd who was a corker. And we prayed our socks off for him too, Fred. And I hadn't quite given up on him. He wasn't as old as Uncle Bud, but I Lloyd was one of them guys would come to the singing big tear, but he never would commit. And uh, we were having Clay's, Uncle Clay's funeral. And his favorite song of ours, his brother, was Let's Meet by the River. Amen. A song the Lord had given me to write. And uh, we were singing Let's Meet by the River. Uncle Clay laid out here. Here said Uncle Lloyd back here. Raise his hand. One time is all I've ever seen. And when it when I was standing by the casket, he come by in his wheelchair, and I said, "Lord, have you got saved? Are you all right with God?" He said, "One hundred percent." Now listen, I tell that now and then to tell you for this, Uncle Clay was a shout. He's all over the place. There you go. I mean, for 65 years, Lloyd just one time praised God. But guess where they're both at today? Amen. They're in the same heaven. I am hoping that Lloyd learned to shout like Clay. <laughs> and Uncle Bud. But anyway, that's some pretty unique stuff right there. And one hand in prayer. I'm reminded of that little skinny girl on Hee Haw, Lulu. And she sang a song I always liked. It said there was two more hands in praise. Right. That when someone's saved, God looks down. Yeah. And there's two more hands in praise. praise so I could write a third verse and say Uncle Lloyd had one more hand in praise. <laughs> one time. It's all he ever praised God that we know of. Now that's powerful God stuff. Good, so I'm going to believe that our Kentucky friends, yes. even some of them that lived, and say, God, I'll serve you. I'll tell it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell it this way. When I get to those two events, they're not even scheduled yet because it's too rough right now, they say. You know, I understand that. But when they call me, I'm going. And uh, I'm going to tell them nicely this. Because we're looking for them to be packed with people who's been helped, who's been dug out of the mud, two feet of mud in a lot of their homes. It's the worst flood ever hit Kentucky. And uh, I'm going to tell them, if you promise God something, you better be living up to it. Yeah. We don't tell God, we'll serve you, and then when we live, forget him. We don't ever do that. Can I get a good amen? amen? So I'm going to tell both places that nicely. We're going to see some people saved those nights. Because they've been hit hard. Real hard. They found one lady of a church that I'm going to in a tree. 
20 feet in the air, dead. The water flushed her up in a tree and that's where she died. You know, it's affected thousands of people. And I've been up some of those hollers. And I'm gonna say this tastefully, but some of them lived in a shack. Something we would put our, I don't know what to say. I'm not gonna say, I was gonna say put my dogs in. I don't wanna say that. But they have almost nothing. I had a guy in a truck stop say, yeah, they keep rebuilding there, don't they? He was kind of slamming them. I don't want to slam any of them. What about you? And I told him, I said, sir, they, they, they own a piece of a, a mountain that's huge that their grandpa left them a little square for them to live on. And that's all they have. They can't rebuild like some of us. So my heart goes to them. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And I tell you what, God blessed many of them to live through it. Because 30 feet of water is a lot of water. It sure is. I praise God that I live in a place that's never flooded like that, but it could. I believe, and I'm going to get back to singing. I believe, Cheryl, wherever you're at, where are you at? Wave at me out there. Our former pastor's wife, where are you? Okay. Cheryl, I believe, and you know how I believe, same as you, Mark, Gary, your kids, that if I lived on the highest hill in Ohio and overlooked the, the town, if God wanted my house to flood, it'd be first to flood. I don't care how high it is. Somebody say, well, how could that happen? Man, my friend wrote the song, I Know the Master of the Wind, Joel Hemphill. He told me personally the Hemphills were in Montana. He said, I never knew they had cyclones or whatever to hit him in Montana. He said it was unbelievable. And he asked his driver to pull over and let him drive because it was his family, his bus. And he wanted to be responsible. He was a nervous wreck. This, mount, this bus was about to blow over the mountain. And they left in first gear and stayed clear down. And that wind, signs blowing in the, in the dry or the other road. They had to get out and move road signs to get through. And as he drove out of there, Mike, the Lord gave him a song. That says, I know the master of the wind. Yes. Oh, I tell you what, I, I serve a big God tonight. Amen. We better not say, well, we'll build on this house. It'll never flood here. You better pray it does it. Because God can send a tornado Tuesday to get it. If you think you're too proud to admit that, can I hear an amen? amen. I give God all the glory. I've been spared through earthquake, one earthquake, different hurricanes. Had to cancel a tour in the Virgin Islands, hurricanes. We've been through tornadoes, many other things, in six and a half million miles as the Spencer family. And God's brought us right here tonight. And I praise him for it. Had three guns pulled on us that we know of. And I praise God they one guy clicked at us. And I heard, I ushered them, my sister and her kids up in the bus and mom, dad, my brother, they were right. I said, it's a gun. I heard the works of it. And he was crazy. He was shooting at us. But somebody, maybe God, had unloaded that gun. Oh, yeah. I believe anything, brother. I believe it could have live bullets. As soon as we drove off, he could have shot six times and hit his target. I believe God is that powerful. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I sung about six without saying a word. Now I'm yakking my head off. <laughs> but I came to sing, but also come to minister. And I want you praying for those people in Kentucky. I know you are. Don't quit because they're still in bad shape. Well, how much singing you want, brother? Tell me where I'm at. You want two or three more? I think I need to sing this one. You see all the trouble. 
bless America again. You know, Lord, the way you did back when this all began. You blessed her then, Lord, but somehow we just took it for granted. And we never did ask again. So just hold her hand, God, that's all. And if America should stumble, please, Lord, don't let her fall. Well, I tell you, we need God to bless America again. And we need to bless God again. God bless America again. Go ahead and sing with me, will you? You see all the trouble that she's in. Amen. Wash her pretty face. Dry her eyes and then. Oh, God bless America again. Here's what's been wrong for many years. Some of our people have forgotten your role in America's greatness, Lord. And honesty and character don't seem to count much with some of our leaders anymore. But Lord, when you were involved, that's when America was the beacon to the world. And with your help, how many believe she can be again? Amen. So please, God, we say, don't we? Don't we pray that? God bless America. Again, I want you to really sing it. We all know it now. Sing it loud, will you? God bless America again. Amen. You see all the trouble that she's in. Amen. That's what we need 
I want to talk to you for a quick moment. Then I'm going to sing one more song. My CDs are in the back. I brought them so you can walk by them and I'll put them back in the box. I've done that a time or two. But if you want to support my ministry tonight, if you like our songs, I have my parents' music dispensers. I have mine. You can get any two for 20 bucks or five for 40. I do take a good check <laughs> or a good credit card. If you'd rather do that, it's fine. Or cash. But I, I want you to buy a couple if you will. It'll help me. Plus, I want you to really enjoy the songs. Two for 20, five for 40. I have soundtracks as well for singers, and they're usually $20 each. I'm going to do them tonight the same price, two for 20 or five for 40. Now, those are full projects. Those soundtracks don't have one song. They got 10 or 12 or 15 on there. So you're getting about a dollar a song instead of $12 at the bookstore per song. That's what it costs. So that's a great deal. You can get them while I'm here. And I uh, appreciate you buying my music. I think they're going to bring the band up. We going to do that? Yeah. All right, get them up here, Fred. I'm going to sing a song that I recorded a few years back. I did a tribute to the late, great Rusty Goodman. And uh, uh, bring that when you come. I can't reach it from here. I've got a bad back. Thanks, Fred, very much. Yeah. I don't want to fall in the orchestra pit. I've already done that. Can he? Amen. Oh, that's Gerald Crabb. I was there when Gerald Crabb fell in an orchestra pit in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not interested. While we're talking, Kingsman, remember? They had Big Ed Crawford with them. And they would, you know, the Kings, and they'd throw each other, throw each other in the, in the, off the stage and everything else, having a good time. And old Ed jumped and went like this with his bike and went head and ear. He forgot there was an orchestra pit there. He thought it was flat. It was another eight feet. It took him about a half hour to get out of there, I heard. <laughs> so we're not going to do that tonight. But those things happen. Well, we're getting more feedback. We better, we better be careful with that. I wonder why we're getting that. Are you there? Would you sound Tucker? Yeah, Tucker. I couldn't quite say anything. Tucker, I think we're okay. You feel we're all right? We, you need me to let them check them or anything? Can't hear you. Okay, he says we're good. We all good? All right. I know the piano wants an E flat or up. You're so good you don't care, right? Let's do an S. That's awesome. Let me check something here. We did, this is unrehearsed in case you didn't know. Let me check the music. We know.
still I wouldn't take nothing from a jury now. Verse 2. There ain't nothing in the world that'll ever take the place of God's love. Silver and gold can never buy his mighty touch from above. When my soul needs healing, I begin to feel in his power. I can say thank the Lord I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. so thankful for living with calls tonight to brought us here together. Brother, you got anything you want to add, Pastor? Uh, I was just saying, is Eva still here? Eva Robbins, would you come down, please? Eva, you may be seated. This will just take two minutes, okay? Eva heads up the Roy Rogers uh, work that we still have going, too. And she's got a carload of, she can tell you, if anybody uh, can help, we'll bring them into the back of the theater tonight, and then we'll see that it gets to Kentucky, okay? So you tell me. Hello. I um, opened up the Roy Rogers Museum down in Portsmouth, and I also run the Roy Rogers Festival every year, and... Um, this year we didn't have one. I've, been, I've had a lot of things going on in my life. I lost my husband in 2020. And then 10 months later, I lost my 48 year old son to COVID, seven days in the hospital. And that's all it took. So I've kind of took a year off and we're planning a 40th anniversary for next year. And yeah. we'd like to see anybody that would love to come. We are having a good plan going on. And it's, um, like I said, the 40th anniversary celebration. But uh, when I saw the ad about tonight and the donations, I have a neighbor that she lost her husband about six months after my husband passed away. And about three months ago, she brought over boxes and boxes of adult uh, the pins, the, the regular undergarment ones. And I didn't have any use for them until now. I've got them all stacked in my car and there's probably 60 or more unopened bags that I want to donate for the calls for the flood victims. And I sure have enjoyed tonight I um, actually, I think it's my first time listening to Fred and the rest of them singing, and I really <laughs> have enjoyed it. Um, and I enjoy Brother Mike. We had a long talk just sitting there at the fair the other day. Had a lot of rain and stuff, yeah. but uh, it just draws you closer and closer. And and I miss everybody. I really do. Um, and I want to do what I can, and um, I'll probably be there Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's the way that it works. We help each other. Uh, and the last thing I'll say tonight, I don't know that we get it done, but we're working on a unity wall. That's what you've heard tonight. We're trying to work on a unity wall that I had a friend in Arizona. They said we can get these unity walls. You see the See the three crosses up there? How would you like to see a big unity thing beside those crosses across America? She said, we can get these things done. And so uh, that's what we're working on too because the United States needs to unite or we're going to fail. Amen. We need, and Christians are the ones that can pull it together 
and right. we got to stand up and fight. Amen. I mean, in God. <laughs> Let's give it up for Pastor Mike Gifford. Thank you, guys. We will be back. Make sure you join us online. Look for updates. And once again, thank you so much. God bless you for everything tonight. We love you guys. And I think we had a closing prayer. Should we, Pastor White? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We thank you for this opportunity that you give us to be together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray that you would go with us to our homes. We might be united together under one name. We know who's coming again. The Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray that we'll be ready to meet you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. God bless.